2 Kings chapter 20. 2 Kings chapter 20. From verse 1 that was so eloquently read by Brother Jared. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. This is terminal illness. There's no recovery from it. Sick unto death means that you are just one step before dying. <coughs> All of us are really unto death, you know, but we might have a distance again too. But sick unto death means that we are going to die almost within a short space of time. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus said the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Not only is he sick unto death, God has pronounced that you will sick and you will dead. So therefore, there is no escaping this death. So, what does a person do when they get notice that they are going to die? What would you do if you got a notice from the doctors, from whosoever it is, that the sickness that you have is unto death? I wonder what would be your prayer after that. Would it be a prayer of regret? Would it be, oh Lord, all the things I've done, please forgive me? Or would it be one that we are satisfied with the pronouncement and we are saying, Lord, I'm ready to come home. If you check your life, you check your life, honestly look at yourself and ask yourself, if you got a notice that you are going to die, what would be the circumstance? What would be your heart's condition? Paul says, I have fought a good fight. I finished my course. And henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which God the righteous judge shall give to me, but not only to me, but to all those who love his appearance. <laughs> for me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Paul and those guys looked forward to death. And there is a reason why they looked forward to death, which we may come to in just a while. Verse 2 in 2 Kings chapter 20. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I think that most people, if they get notice of they're going to die, prayer is going to be their next move. Oh, Lord, even if they didn't sit, close their eyes and pray, they will say, oh, Lord. Yeah? You ever get news and they say, oh, Lord. Yes, God becomes the first in the mouth. And he got the message, turned his face to the wall, because he's lying down in bed, and this is what he prayed unto the Lord. A very insignificant prayer. This is a king. This is a king that has 1% I understand of even mention in the Bible. Not even a king as David. Not even a king as, as some of those other kings that we've read about. Solomon and so on. But Hezekiah gets at least 1% of the notice inside of here. And yet, he is a king that we don't know about so much. He turned his face to the wall, the Bible says. I beg you, Lord. Beseech means beg. Lord, I beg you. Remember now how I have walked before thee in truth. He's reminding God of his lifestyle. I have been living in truth, not just living nice. I've been living in truth and with a perfect heart. Lord, don't forget that. Lord, remember that I walked in that way and have done that which is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept sore, which means he didn't just cry, he hollered. You know what it is to cry to the point that you holler? You don't even know what you're saying? Your face nasty, you didn't care who didn't who, who see your face nasty because you just reached a, a point of desperation. I suspect this is where he was, where he wept so. And the Bible says, it came to pass. Before Isaiah was gone into the middle of the court, Isaiah was the one who brought news to him. Before he went into the court, that the word of the Lord came to him saying, turn again, go back. You just give 
Hezekiah message. I want you to go back inside of there. Tell him who is the captain of my people. God talking here now. Thus said the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I say you will die and you will not live. I have heard your prayer and I'm saying to you that I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. In the third day, thou shalt go up to the house of the Lord. God changed his mind on a pronouncement that he made concerning it upon the prayer of Hezekiah. Now, when you read the story, this is amazing. This is really amazing. The thing that is so amazing is my first point. And my topic is, set your house in order. Set your house in order. The reason why he had to tell him, set his house in order, is that there, anybody who's going to die must do some preparation for death. There are some things you have to put in place for your children. There are some things you have to put in place for continuity after you are gone. Set your house in order. And sometimes there are things we have to put in our lives in order for us to prepare for death. Death is a crisis. Death is a separation. Death is an issue that we have. All of us have some things that we are grappling with in our own lives. But we are not ready for death yet because we have not set our houses in order. Is your house in order? Are you ready to depart this life? Are you ready for death? If something should happen to you critically, can you die? This man, let me tell you, this man started to call his own history and say, Lord, watch at this. This is how things have been. I have lived according to truth. You ask me to live in this way, I have lived that way. I have a perfect heart because I'm right in my heart with you. Is thine heart right with God? His answer is yes. But the reason why he could do that, I could understand when I read 2 Kings chapter 18. Because 2 Kings chapter 18 says that now, and verse 1, it came to pass in the third year of Hoshea, son of Eli, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. He came to reign, and here his age, to verse 2, 25 years old was he when he began to reign. A young man, 25 years, he is king. And he reigned 29 years in Israel, in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Abi, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord according to all that David his father did. That's why he could call his own reputation to account. Because he did all that is right in the sight of the Lord. He removed the high places because his father, Zechariah, did a lot of nonsense and bought in false gods. He removed all the high places, broke the images, cut down the groves, broke break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made for unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it and he called it Nehushtan. Listen to verse 5. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him, Hezekiah, was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. For he clave to the Lord, departed not from following him, but kept his commandments which the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord was with him, and he prospered whithersoever he went forth, and he rebelled against the king of Assyria and served him not. And so the Bible talks about his exploits and the success that he has had in all his doing. In other words, here's a man going and dying. And he's able to tell God, to God's face, God, look at my life. Look at how I'm living. You check my past. And I'm making a request to you based on my past. When you check my life, I am asking you, Lord, you have said that I will die and not live. I'm asking you, Lord, I want to live. Wow. 
If God checks your past, could you change God's mind? You know what helps somebody to be able to get favor. If you are brought before the court, and before the court, you are charged with an offense. Before the judge gives that um, judgment, many times the judge would say, bring the records of the person's past. Let me see whether there's any conviction against the person in the past to know how my judgment will be today. Your past has a lot to do with how much you could change God's mind in your favor. Hello, let me say that again. Your past has a lot to do with how much you could change God's mind in your favor. Most of us tell God, God, give me a chance. And if you give me a chance and we start to bargain with God, I will. Because we ignore our past. Because our past, if God has to look into the past, we are not going to get God to change his mind. So we promise God, God, if you just do this, just give me one chance, just solve this problem in my life, then I will. But not so. You know when you go to the bank, to the credit union, to get a loan, refinance your loan, to get another loan, you know what they do? They go into your history to know how good you have been in paying your debt. Your credit history. That is the difference between somebody who has a bad credit history and how much they will get, if they will get, and somebody who has had a good payment record and a good credit history. They can get extra that many times they don't even deserve. Because of the fact they don't may not have what the amount of money, but their history says this is somebody I could take a risk over. Your past has a lot to do with getting God's attention. We talk about God wanting to get our attention. Sometimes we need to get God's attention. You know why some of us can't get things going in our lives? I believe we have not been working to develop a credit history with God. If we start looking at ourselves and telling ourselves, God, this is my life. This is my life. I'm living in accordance with God's will. I'm living in accordance with God's will and God's word. And you just live that life. When something happens to you in your time, you can always do as Hezekiah. Go to God and say, God, look me. It's not by what you do, you know. It's by your relationship with God and also what you have done. Cornelius, the Bible says, was a righteous man. A man who gave alms and prayed to God always, and he taught his entire family to be able to respect God. But he was lost. You hear what God said? Your prayers and your alms have come up as a memorial before me. Your past have impressed me. So today, I'm prepared to do something for you. We sometimes live anyhow ad hoc. When we get in trouble, we rush to God. And when we come to God, and God help us out, we go on again. Because we forget God. Forgetting that we will need God again. And that's why we tell people, be thou faithful unto death. Revelation 2.10. Stop using God. Brother, Brother Devon taught a lesson on God. Don't use God as an ATM. Yeah? Whenever we need God, we come rushing to God. God, please help me. And so on. we come to church, ask the brethren, pray, pray for me, brethren, because I'm going through this, going through that. Soon as you get it and, you're, you're, and things good, things better, you don't see you again. Yeah? Because you don't need God. And then every time you keep coming, God is going to look back at your history. And God is going to say, no, 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 no. You had enough time. You had enough time. Because whenever I give you a chance, you're bold. Is a faithfulness to God. Is a lifestyle to God that God wants. So God would always look into our past. And I ask you to search your own past now. Have you been living faithful to God? And I'm talking about faithful in your relationship with God, yes. People think faithfulness means I just read my Bible and I just pray. I live nice with people. I don't, I don't rob anybody and call that faithful. That's not faithfulness only. Faithfulness is living according to truth. This is what Hezekiah said. I have lived according to truth. Truth is, I have lined up myself with your word. What you have asked, I have done. The Bible says, why call ye me Lord, Lord? And you're not prepared to do what I say. Part of that 
is assembling with God's people. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as some people do, but exhort one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. That is part of faithfulness. Part of faithfulness also is in always keeping check with your sin. Making sure that every time you are sinning, you ask God, Lord, forgive me. Here's what we do. Sometimes we hold sin. We cover it up. And we say, nobody is, no, knows about it, so therefore I good. The Bible says, he that knoweth to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. We have to start living recognizing that even if other people don't see us, God sees God sees and God knows. Where shall I go to escape God? If I go to the highest mountain, thou art there. If I go to the greatest part of the sea, thou art there. Wherever it is I go, thou art there. But these people are not. But God is there. You have to live in a conscience with God and say, Lord, this is me and you. So number one, your history. Number two, God is going to give everybody a window of opportunity to get it right. Because God is asking us to set our house in order. But he will always give you a window of opportunity. That window may be today. Because the Bible says today is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. So if we have anybody here who's not a Christian, the best time today is today. Because today we have, tomorrow we don't. Somebody said, today is your present. Therefore, your present is the gift that God has given to you. That's what a present is. It is a gift today. Tomorrow is never a present for you. Because that's why they don't call tomorrow present. They call now present. So therefore, use the gift that God has given you. He said, today is the day of salvation. Today is the acceptable time. It's the best time. We always say, we'll put it off. One day I will make up my mind. I'm going to decide one day and so on. But even the people on Facebook, we're asking you, if God has called you and God has given you a window of opportunity, how do you know a window of opportunity has taken place? Because God is always going to send us a signal. So just being here today, May be a signal that God says, you needed to hear this sermon today. This is why you are here. And this being here today is your signal that God is trying to say, set your house in order. So God has said to Hezekiah, set your house in order. Hezekiah asks for extra time. Here's what the Bible said. God gave him 15 more years. Wow. You change a God's mind. Not only were you sick unto death, God himself sent a man and said, you are, good, you are sick and you are sick unto death and you will die. And God withdraw his own will. Yes? And then the Bible says that what he did, he got up, they told him what to do, put this boil, put, put this thing on the boil, and he will recover. And in true term, he recovered. But when you listen to the exploits of Hezekiah, Hezekiah continued to put his life in accordance with God's will and God's word. This is why the Bible said um, that I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Forever and ever. So therefore, if you want to serve God, if you want to live in accordance with God's will, he said, take action today. Use your life to God's, get God's attention and God will open up the windows of opportunity for you. If you are here today and you are listening, the message to you is to set your house in order. Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? Can you look at your life and use your life as your credit to God and say, God, if you look at my life, you'll see I lived in accordance with you and I'm asking you a big favor right now. I'm asking you a favor based on my past credit. 
And can you grant me this favor? I know you said that I will die. I know you said that I'm going to have a problem in my marriage. I know you said that you'll have a problem with my, uh, in paying my debts. I know that you said I'm going to have all of these issues of sickness and so on. But Lord, just look at my life. Just look at my life. And you could see, historically, I have been faithful to you. I've been living in accordance with you. I have a big favor for you, Lord. And I'm asking you to grant me this favor. Can you have such power over God? Now you understand why I'm going into prayer and fast. Because that is a big one. When I understood that, I said, wow, no, 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 no. But that one is, is going to take a lot to move God. If you are here, I'm saying, we want to pray for you, with you. If you are not a Christian, we are saying, hey, today, set your house in order. If you are a Christian and you are falling away, or if you have some problems in your life, you have some sin in your life, set your house in order. Start living in faithfulness to God. Mm -hmm.